Right. Okay, guys. Um, this very short um, recap is on this dopamine stabilizing uh, agents. Okay, dopamine system stabilizers, i.e., the aripiprazole. Okay, so we are going to go through the concepts or pharmacology of aripiprazole again because I feel like this is a very very important topic. I I personally think that's difficult too. So I will go over that again, and uh, it will be short. And you can uh, you know reference it off for your study. All right. So first of all, here is the pharmacological um, property of aripiprazole in terms of being a, an agonist or antagonist uh, for in different part of the um, the regions of the brain. Okay. So uh, the concept here is that aripiprazole is a partial agonist. Okay. So in the presence. Okay, in the presence of a agonist, i.e., dopamine, it is weaker. Okay, it is weaker than a dopamine. So when it competes with the uh, a a stronger ligand, it ended up become a antagonist on this postsynaptic D two receptors. Okay, so it also antagonizes. Okay, five HD two A. Okay, but on the other hand, on the presynaptic uh, D two receptor, it have a weak agonist effect. And also a weak agonist effect on 5-HT1A receptors. All right, now here we look at its uh, pharmacology at each individual uh, pathway. All right, so be clear with the pathway. So first here we have this mesolimbic pathway, where this pathway dopamine is excess. So mesolimbic pathway tied to positive symptoms. Okay, so we want to remove uh, the you know uh, remove the actions of dopamine at those pathways. So uh, first it work as a weak activation, you know, as a agonist on presynaptic. Uh, D2 autoreceptors, okay, weak activation will still decrease the release of dopamine into the synapse. All right, and postsynaptically, postsynaptic D2 receptors, okay, uh, it block, okay, it add, it's an antagonist. All right, here is the, the reasons behind it. Under conditions of high dopaminergic tones, the partial agonists act in, in, instead as an antagonist. So be, because you have dopamine there that is stronger okay in terms of competing for the same receptor if a repiposal win over those receptor it will become an antagonist in a sense all right so all of these alleviate or helped with the positive symptoms all right now looking at the mesocortical pathway here is the you know tie to what negative symptoms okay negative symptoms where dopamine is deficient we want some dopamine or dopamine actions in mesocortical pathway all right so here uh, under normal circumstances here we have this serotonin neuron that is releasing serotonin what it does it will inhibit okay the release of dopamine that is not good we want dopamine here in this case all right so first of all it uh, at is a agonist on 5-HT1A receptor okay this plus size means agonist a G O N I S T or activating this 5 H T one A receptors. Okay, you activating an auto receptors on this end. All right, so you will basically <coughs> decrease okay the release of 5 H T or 5 uh, or serotonin. Okay, and also this drug aripiprazole also will bind to 5 H T two A receptors on a dopamine releasing. Uh, neurons in this case act as a antagonist. Antagonist, okay. Now in this case, it block, okay. It blocked it also auto receptors. It block auto receptors, okay. That leads to increase in dopamine release. So you achieve your goal. You want more dopamine here. That help with the negative symptoms. All right. In Negro striatal pathway, the concept is essentially the same. If you understand one of the two pathway, meso, so always tie mesocortical and Negro striatal pathway together in terms of thinking how the drug works. Right? If you understand the other one, you understand you should understand this one with very little uh, trouble. So basically, it blocks the synaptic, uh, postsynaptic, uh, but 
However, okay. However, so what happened is that it has other actions that are more dominant than the small antagonist effect on the D two receptor at the postsynaptic level. All right, here are the keys. Okay, there was one, two, three other keys, and uh, what happened is activate the presynaptic five HT one A receptor autoreceptor that makes that decreased serotonin release, okay, that is the same, exactly same thing happening in the previous figure, okay, now it's just being presented in word. And concurrently, this drug also block 5-HT2A autoreceptors on dopaminogenic neurons, okay, so it block an autoreceptor that help, uh, that regulate dopamine release, so you ended up with increase, okay, enhance dopamine release okay now and en hence you got more dopamine in the synapse all right this is the synapse you get more d8 okay all right you get the postsynaptics get activating more of these postsynaptic d2 okay d2 receptors and you help with uh, eliminating or minimizing some of these ep uh, extra pyramidal side effect eps all right, clear. So again, this aripiprazole drug is very, you know, important, <laughs> and I think the concepts are a little bit more complicated than uh, other drugs, mainly because that it adds sometimes at as a agonist, sometimes at as a antagonist. So get clear with your head, you know, in your head. So which one is which in which case? Okay. Also, these receptors. Okay, know those receptors. Uh, you know what they are interacting. Okay, this is this is D two. All right. All right. So that's all for this episode. Okay. Thank you for watching and listening.